psyllium husk is my go-to fiber. Yep, that's what I'm going to, I think, start consuming. Yeah, I used to take those uh, Metamucil crackers, uh, which my ex-husband would call poop crackers. Because yep. <laughs> um, they tasted like that as well as make you do that. Oh, yeah. Well, that's why I like, you, you can get the psyllium husk uh, capsules, and they're kind of horse pills, but you just swallow them. Mm. and. Yep. I just mix powder into my smoothies. I've got like a double extra fiber supplement that I take every day. It's role playing with fifty year olds. <laughs> Should we teach a uh, master class on uh, how to not play Blades in the Dark? <laughs> <laughs> Who's that guy from Indie Actor Studio? Wilford Brimley, James yeah. uh, James Upton Lipton. James Lipton. Lipton. Yeah. Okay, Rob, you're James Lipton. Take it away. Uh, I'm not sure how that works, but okay. <laughs> we left off our last session of Blades in the Dark with three, I've been calling them jobs, three scores uh, hanging out there. One, you found that mummified heart in Mist Shore Park uh, at the center of some kind of weird cult activity from that strange cult uh, that uh, Skurlock had, was somehow connected to. Uh, you helped kill them all. So you talk to this group of young divers who dive into the disgusting canals of Duskwall looking for uh, treasure or at least something they can sell to get by. They've been troubled by some sort of gang, unspecified gang, and you negotiated a deal with them. If you can protect them from their frequent tormentors and thieves, they will give you a regular uh, income based on what they're able to pull out of the water. Oh, and I think Right of first refusal if they find anything interesting down there. Correct. Yes. And finally, after a delightful tea party at the Rowans, Silver learned that they are very interested. Zamira Rowan, the head of the household, is interested in knowing what happened to her disappeared niece, Daniela Rowan. Who knows? Who, yeah, who could, could really, anything could We're happen. We're just a spunky gang to find out. <laughs> And of, and of course, uh, Daniela died at the aforementioned Miss Shore Park, where you found the heart. It all it all ties back together one way or another. So these are kind of small, or could be smaller scores that you can approach in different ways. We could tackle them one at a time. You could split up and each of them do them, and we kind of split screen it. You can, of course, seek out information about any or all of them before you plunge in by doing it, picking an action to do to gather information uh, before we get rolling. I will throw it to the team uh, to discuss what you want to try first. You did mention that the um, that the Rowans had uh, contracted with a bounty hunter too, by the name of Casta. Casta, who is uh, Gun? That's your rival, I believe. Yes. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, can I take us into the? I've always kind of imagined that we kind of meet in the sort of dilapidated parlor in uh, the Sun Chasers' hideout. Definitely. So I think the subject of Casta comes up and. Helena kind of looks down at the floor and uh, is sort of bouncing her knee a little bit. And she says, hey, um, y'all mind if I do a cast on my lonesome? Maybe take one of you along. I just want to well, deal with that one myself. What do you mean by yourself? What do you intend to do? I'd advise that uh, when that time comes, that is absolutely your right, in my opinion. But I, I think there might be. There might be some more angles to play before you interject. If you can, uh, if you can uh, cool your jets for a week or so here. Listen, I just I'll be playing here. She and I has got history. And I'd like the opportunity to talk to her, see if she can maybe walk before we do anything that I would usually do. But that's that's going to be tough. But I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be better. Is there a reward for this uh, Rowan niece? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She didn't say we... anything, did she? Uh, oh, there's a bounty that. hunter. There's a bounty, right? That, oh, uh... yeah. So I, I would say, you know, it, we should try to collect that bounty first. But we got to come up with a good story because she's no dummy. Or is it like a private contract? More of a PI. She hmm. she had invited uh, Silver. She was definitely interested in you and your uh, unsavory connections helping solve yes. this. And it, I think, you know, uh, 
since you were moving in noble society, you didn't get into anything as tacky as discussing exact amounts. Right. Mm-hmm. The notion good, was that uh, you would be rewarded for your efforts. Yeah, there was there was some insinuation there, but it was pretty subtle. Maybe just with your return to society. I don't know. Maybe that mm. doesn't help everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is still a that's a kind of asset. Mm-hmm. Well, if it isn't Lord Two Teeth. Yeah. <laughs> well, Sean C. Pepper slight, Tooth. The slight problem we have. Well, I could be. Uh, I could, no, I could be like the the Prince Regent or something. <laughs> You're getting way ahead of yourself here. <laughs> no, well, the thing with the problem with Willie is you can, as my sister used to say, you could put me in like a thousand dollar suit and I would still look like a bum. <laughs> so that's that's Willie's problem is no matter how you the soot is so ingrained in his skin you ju- you'll just never get it out. I, I, like new if money. If, if if we're casting roles here, I'd probably read more as just hired muscle, and that's that's fine with me. I, I like that. <laughs> the thing is that the problem we have is that uh, gone. Uh, shot her twice in the head. Well, so yes. We, there's the slight problem of of murder of the fact that we murdered her, and um, as I mentioned offline, and I'm gonna guess Willie will bring up again. I suggest maybe we uh, find a way to shift the blame from that and the suspicion from that from us onto this uh, bounty hunter. Gun kind of looks up real quick and says, uh, "Hey, let let me talk to her first. If she walks, then we can find someone else." And I heard an alternate suggestion coming in there. Well, yeah. I'm just saying, and I uh, slowly turn my gaze on Gun. There is a reward available, guys. I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> I was just trying to bring some levity to the situation, Gun. But everybody, I'm laughing. Now. Gun, but isn't. everybody's thinking it. <laughs> now <laughs> i'm not <laughs> uh gun gun kind of like looks around the room and is like no <laughs> i don't think any of you could take me except for willie i wouldn't do no that. in all seriousness though i mean if this is what you got to do this is what you got to do i mean clearly clearly gun feels uh pretty strongly about this so gun so, kind of yeah, so all of this well, I'm I'm not I'm not sure about soloing it per se, but I I agree that maybe he should talk to uh, this bounty hunter. Uh, sorry, what's her name? Casta. Casta. I you know I I agree that you know we should we should try you know talking to her first before shooting. Did I hear Rip uh, asking a question? Yeah. What happened to the to Daniela's body? Yeah. So all the bodies there, you found out uh, for well, they've been collected by the spirit wardens and blue coats because they try to get there and get the bodies cremated before the spirits right. escape. Okay. But there was also uh, information out there, rumors, presumably from the blue coats on the scene, because the spirit wardens would never let anything leak, that the bodies had been mutilated uh, and were their faces were beyond recognition. So as far as you know. Publicly, at least, no one has connected bodies in Miss Shore Park with the missing Daniela Rowan. Well, that's lucky. Well, I have a suggestion. Now, if we want to sell it that we're that we're looking for the killers, why don't I go try and get the autopsy? Do the blue? Um, this is maybe an in-world question. Do the blue coats like when a when a body is taken by the? Uh, oh goodness gracious! Just Spirit drop the name. The spirit wardens, thank you. Uh, I'm I'm assuming there's probably like an autopsy or something that's done, like to say, like, okay, just in case this is a murder, like, or okay, <laughs> oh, or, just in case on this one, <laughs> okay. I mean, this is there's a lot of a lot of murdering going on there. Yeah. So would there be a like a, a coroner's report that I could, as a former blue coat, like go and try to get? And whether I'm successful or not doesn't matter, but it at least looks like sure. someone associated with us. Like and you could, and you could always take me with you because I, I, the commander of the blue coats is, of course, madly in love with me. Oh, right! No, I'm just one of the one connection. of the districts, not the whole shebang. Well, not oh. the whole shebang, but ah, okay. But still, you've got a contact. Yeah, 
And uh, I also do have a fine cover identity at my disposal. You yes. sure do. <laughs> Fancy pepper tape. Okay. So it seems like we're focusing on the Rowan job to start with. I do have a quick clarification on that. Yeah. My fine cover identity is whatever I need for that particular scenario, right? I believe so, yeah. Okay, it's yeah. not just my one Chauncey Peppertooth. I can, right. I can, okay, cool. No, he was just a memorable one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, he was. He's the only one I've busted out so far, honestly. Yeah. But uh, I, I did want a clarification on that because I didn't want to uh, cheat. Yeah. Uh, Are you breaking out Chauncey right? Peppertooth? Oh. No, I'm going to break out some other fine cover identity. Okay. Mm. I don't know yet. Okay. Break glass in case of Chauncey Peppertooth. Mm hmm. <laughs> Um, before, before we go though, uh, just out of character, I know I kind of like just stole the center stage there for a second. Do we want to discuss the merits of the other jobs? Because mm. I, I, that heart is fucking interesting and weird. Like mm -hmm. I, I want to see if we can try to shove in as much as we can. I want to know more about who the circle of flame is before deciding yeah. to contact them directly. Okay. I would like to investigate mm -hmm. who they are, get some, get some deets. Okay. And I did shake hands with the divers. Mm -hmm. And when I shake hands and, and don't come through on it, things go sideways. Oh, so how press? You don't have to select. Like, I'm I'm thinking you yeah. will probably tackle all three of these jobs. I don't know if we'll get through them all tonight. But don't okay. feel like you have to pick one uh, to the exclusion of the others. Because this right. is all happening probably over the course of a week or two. Well, getting getting this Rowan investigation pointed in a different direction is probably uh, the priority for our safety. Okay, I propose this: each of you can do a, a uh, do some sort of information gathering. I've heard of a couple things suggested so far uh, about any of the jobs you see fit, and then you can come back with your information, and we will dive into one of the scores. Okay. Okay. And one that I heard there was the idea of trying to seek out blue coat reports. And yeah, um, they do keep records. They're not necessarily detailed coroner's reports on every uh, death, suspicious or otherwise, in Duskwall, because there are lots of deaths, suspicious and otherwise, in Duskwall. Sure. And there's not necessarily the resources. That said, there may well be some information out there you could try to get to. Yeah, and it, if it's if a uh, like if a socialite is contacting people to like figure out what happened. Mm -hmm. That means that person was in maybe important enough for there to be some notes taken by the blue coats, ostensibly, mm -hmm. right? So they may not have known that it was her, because again, they sure. have mutilated, unidentifiable, potentially bodies there. Yeah did i did I take her head completely off? I I can't even remember anymore, frankly. She was in poor shape. <laughs> something came by and mutilated. Or something after came by we left. Later. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that hitch. Okay, but um, World World Rise Gun believes that that information could be something that could exist. Oh, totally. Yeah. Okay, definitely. Cool. Gun, do you want to make a roll to uh, check out your police contacts and see if you can get your hands on some juicy uh, corner report? Yes. Now, here's the tricky bit. <laughs> I don't have a I don't have a specific contact listed. Right. I was more just leaning on just like my background uh, being a thing that I could sort of sure. like utilize to. Well, also, you of... as a group have a contact. Oh, oh Conway, right. I believe is his name. And he's a kind of a desk jockey, actually, is how we I think we had defined him. Oh, perfect. Yeah, because this would be exactly something that would be really bureaucratic. Yeah. So uh, what's his name again? Conway, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So. Uh... <laughs> I think that a uh, gun just straight up walks into uh, walks into the precinct or whatever to to go see Conway and just like just kind of lays it out like, hey, I, I just want to interject a really quick flashback here because the mechanic exists. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. Flashback uh, to you getting ready to go and uh, Seymour coming over to give you some sage advice about uh, about the art of the deal. And <laughs> nice. <laughs> He says, remember, establish dominance. Call him by the wrong name first. <laughs> Conroy or some shit. Okay. He doesn't mean shit to you. Go get him, champ. The more valuable the flashback, the more stress it costs you. I will assess a zero stress cost on that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was good. Now, unless, <laughs> just... no, unless it was like, 
<laughs> Were you trying to assist my role there? <laughs> no, not necessarily. I was just adding ah. flavor. No, yeah. I love it. Uh, <laughs> that's great because I don't even remember his name anymore. Conley? Conroy. Uh, Conroy. Con- Say Conroy. Conrad. Okay. Yeah, so you as a team have a way to make... Con- You're just going to walk into the precinct house, though? Hell yeah. Okay, so you walk in, a couple of uh, officers are there slowly writing out handwritten reports and look up at you as you walk in and stride back. Conway just has a desk in a corner. He doesn't have a separate office or anything like that. Only the you see in the one separate office a captain of some sort sleeping at the desk. Conway looks up and kind of does a quick look around like, what, do, what here, what? What are you doing here? Hey, I wanted to ask you a favor. Uh, just a minute. Uh, taking my break, fellas. Be back at five. Nobody responds in any way. <laughs> Conway waves you back out the front door and walks you out in the street. What do you want? Jesus, Conway, you are just well, so you're just coming. So it just to to point things out. You're part of sort of a criminal operation, and we're supposed to be arresting criminals. So you know, chit chatting in my office not always the. Any, what do you want? Gun's face just like drops from like the kind of wry smirk she usually has to just like sort of like a just a full like non expression and says, You and I both know that what I do is hell of a lot better than what any of you all are doing in there. Now here's the thing. I'm gonna need the coroner's report on uh on that bird that just got what just got shot up in Mistborn Park. I'm looking into it for a friend of mine. The which one? There were like how many corpses stacked up there? Mm. Seven? Eight? You don't know nothing about that, do you? No. I now I know about the one. There was some there was like what what was her name? Well, so again, they don't necessarily know that it's her. Uh, oh gotcha. Do I have a description of any kind that would be helpful? Uh yeah. Well you saw her when you face. shot her. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a great point. <laughs> um <laughs> You said her? There were what? One, two, just two females, I think. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, can I get theirs? You said there was multiple people there? Yeah. There were, you guys killed multiple cultists. <laughs> no, I am, I am playing dumb. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. That was in, <laughs> uh, in character. Yeah. You didn't hear about <laughs> sorry, that? I'm trying to like, keep accent. <laughs> it was some kind of bloodbath, some kind of cult thing. It was uh, not a pretty scene. I'm glad I wasn't there myself. <laughs> well, you didn't hear from me, but apparently there was an. Some some noble sprats running around with those folks. Anyway, yeah, if you could get me anything on that, that would be just fantastic. All right, all right, I'll uh, I'll dig it up for you. Uh, I shouldn't keep coming in and out. Can you meet me back here in three hours? I'll bring it out on my at at the end of my shift. I am just gonna wait out here. You just well, come out over there, maybe. and if you make me wait three hours, I'm gonna be really cross. All right. Well, listen. I'll get it for you in a, in a couple minutes. She just sits gotta... down on like a on a. She just like completely shuts down. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. But listen, this is for real. I gotta lay low uh, for a bit. Uh, they got an inspector gonna be stationed here for like a week or two. They say, and you know What's the inspectors name? are kind of the real. Ain't given us a name yet, yeah. but they say they're gonna park one here. Kind of a hard ass is the is the word around the the depot. All right. Well, that's good information too. I might even wait three hours. Okay, so after a wait, uh, Conway brings out. You didn't. How did you long ever call does it take? It? <laughs> he uh, he'll he expedites it, deciding that he doesn't actually want uh, <laughs> the vicious gun person hanging out on the front stoop all damn day. <laughs> oh, I uh, thought we were in an alley. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. I thought you're parking yourself closer to there. Okay. Anyway, he he doesn't wait the whole full three hours. He makes some kind of excuse, brings you out. Uh, I copied it down. So here we've got the the original in there. I don't want that to disappear. It could be my ass. All right, and she just leaves. Okay, that's not extensive information, but it gives you a little bit. Yeah, uh, but but they were all like mutilated, right? Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. That's weird. Who else wants to go for some information on a job? I'd like to find more about these Circle of Flame folks. Okay. Um, what you know so far is, uh, well, you've worked with them. That was the first mission that uh, Madame Volyova was there. Mm. You're not sure exactly her position there, but she was the one who contracted with you on their behalf mm. uh, for your first score. 
which was oh yeah right uh trashing lord skurlock's uh weird that's right ghost bell shutdown device and stealing stuff for them so we had a good working relationship that one time yeah yeah and uh just by reputation you know that uh, the word is there are some fairly well-to-do people at the center of it they fancy themselves antiquarians and collectors but it's pretty well known in the criminal community that they do some crimes in too. In many cases, to get hold of artifacts or uh, spells or things like that that they want. Nobody knows exactly what their ultimate game is, but that's everybody agrees that's the basic sort of thing that they that they're involved in. Do you want to gather more information about them and uh, or their possible? Somebody had gotten word on the street that this mummified heart seemed like the sort of thing that they would be interested in, mm-hmm. possibly in. Uh, offering remu- remuneration for remuneration. Could they have been behind digging it up? Uh, your understanding was that weird cult was Skurlock affiliated. Uh, and in fact, the <laughs> the animated corpse was animated by a spirit who you've run into before in Skurlock associated settings. Now, Willie's viewing everything like he's viewing this um, bounty hunter and certainly this heart as revenue streams for us which is <laughs> what we really need and this is all he's thinking about is money well i would also like to get some information to help me in my own studies mm-hmm. yeah but if rip is going to take this to madame volyova or at least even hint that we have it to her mm-hmm. i don't know how much we can trust her that's kind of what i was hoping to get at maybe yeah. i would like to find out some more information about their criminal activities Okay. Uh, how would you go about gathering information on such a thing, big picture or small picture? Um, let's see. Do you bring this up at the at the table? I mean, yeah, I would like to. I mean, okay. yeah, I'm not trying to be uh, silent about this. I, I could certainly introduce you to my friend Salia, the information broker. Hmm. He might know something. Sure. Uh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, you make the introduction to Salia, who doesn't know necessarily everything there is to know. But uh, but just, I mean, they would know the general reputation of the gangs around town and whether mm, they're yeah. double-crossing or... Yeah. So the general... Salia says, oh, yes, uh, Circle of Flame. I've worked with them in the past. If they... Uh, like any group, they know they know the code, like any group. If they contract you with you to do something... They'll pay you for it because they don't, you know, they they don't want to cut off everybody else. They know there will be retaliation. They want to keep their reputation up. Get on the wrong side. They're not above doing some pretty nasty, nasty stuff. And they've got some mystical ways to do nasty stuff along the way, too. They've got some guards. Uh, you know, they're not. They've got some people who are pretty good in a fight. They've got some pretty. The word is they've got some pretty high up their connections. But yes, uh and, you know, if you're not in their employ and you have something they want, well, they're not above finding unconventional means to get it from you. Eh? <clears throat> but if you, uh, you, pre- you approach them in good faith, I wouldn't worry too much. Okay. That's good to know. Thank you. And I will pull out a, a fancy cigar and tuck it in his pocket. Ah, you know the ones I like. I try. <laughs> Well, I don't want to just go straight to um, the Circle of Flame with it in my hand. I would like to... I kind of picture this society as like very Victorian or something. It's like you can send a card over. <laughs> you could, actually. So I think I will. I think that'll uh, be good for gathering information now. When you actually decide you're going to make your approach, we'll decide what your approach is and okay. then make our position roll, whatever right, you call good. it. Anybody else want to gather a little info before we start diving in? Does that count as my gather info making nah. the introduction or... Nah. Um, so there's one thing that just suddenly occurred to me, and that is that there is one entity that can tie us back to this murder, and that's the, the reanimating spirit. Oh, yeah. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Reminding the DM, damn it. No, no, no. Uh, oh, oh, I know you're <laughs> Okay. I mean, to be um, fair. Uh... To be fair. It's not like he was yeah. doing anything really above board there. <laughs> well, no, but I'm saying that mm-hmm. that if that spirit is reanimated, that's someone who could get word back one way or another. That is true. That that we are tied to this. So figuring out who that reanimated spirit was might be an avenue to start following, but I don't even 
the arcane is not my jam. I don't even know mm. where to start there. That actually might be a uh, long-term project, actually. Uh, okay. If somebody wanted to start it when we get to downtime. Yeah, I'll make a note to talk about that during downtime. Uh, did you have a gather information idea, Willie? Not really. Uh, okay. My main concern is if Gon is going to meet Casta, I would like Willie to case out the location of that meeting just to have Gon's back. Okay. And uh, he would like to accompany Dude. Gon. The problem, he would like to accompany Gon just as a, um, he would hang back, but um, mm. he would be armed just in case. But the problem is he'd also kind of like to accompany Rip. So I don't know if he's kind of getting, he's got a taste for the fantastical at this point. So um, really? it would depend, depend on which way we go. Sure. That'll all come up when we get to the jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Silver, do you have any information you want to try to gather before we dive into scores here? Well, actually, um, I was considering uh, going with uh, with Rip on this one uh, because the Circle of Flame is full of nobles, mm -hmm. and it's possible I could throw some names around and you know name drop and try to see what's up with that and who is involved. It'd be nice to know. It'd be nice to know, you know, in in the dusk in the Duskwall society, who is involved with such things. Okay. So if you want to do some pre-information gathering, you could try just sort of a consort role, if you'd like, actually, to sure. work your society contacts to see if anybody knows who's in the uh, Circle of Flame. Finally, something we can roll dice for. <laughs> Yay! So, uh, I'm sorry, what's, what's the role again for this? Uh, it depends on how you wanted to swing it, uh, but consort might work. It's one for each dot you have in it, and then you get a six-sided die for each dot, and we look at the highest number. And I didn't want to say consort was the only option. It just seemed like in character, kind of. But right, I'm trying to. I'm trying to see if this thing. Uh, if uh, no, I don't think finesse would be. I think a consort would be more of a, more of an information gathering tool than finesse. Right. You show up at the the right. You know your favorite tea shop in Charterstone mm -hmm. or something like that. Right. And this is as a gather information role. You're not going to be punished for failures here. Okay. No, not bad. A moderate success. Okay. Good first roll, guys. Yay. So you don't get tons of information, but uh, there are a couple people that you manage to get in a gossipy mood, and they start speculating. And the problem is, isn't that they don't give you enough names. They give you too many names. Like, okay. if, if all the names that came up associated with the Circle of Flame, like, there wouldn't be any nobles not affiliated. But you do get a couple of legit things uh, out of this that you think are probably the real deal. One, the Centralia Club. Centralia Club. In, in Six Towers, actually, the rumor is that uh, s at least some of the people they refer to uh, often go in and out of there. That might be their headquarters or at least a place where they entertain the public. And you do get mentioned a painter named Raffalo, who often does uh, contracts and paintings for noble customers and is known as a very eccentric but uh, visionary artist, mm. has actually publicly bragged about being in this extremely secret society. Okay, it looks like I'm getting a painting commissioned. <laughs> Ooh. Good luck paying for it. <laughs> And then well, uh, I'm, I'm taking, we can I'm always taking, just kill him. I'm, I'm taking Chauncey <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Paint the picture that we rob and kill him. It'll be the it'll be the last one he ever painted. It'll be worth more money that way. <laughs> Yay! All right, and Seymour, I did, did, I did, did actually info I, okay. I actually yes. did, did think of Willie. Oh no! Uh, I, <laughs> I yeah, you, you I were next. Willie, go first. I, I had one thing um, that Willie could try. Mm -hmm. um, remember those. Uh, Cultists that we I killed. Do. <laughs> you probably I do remember, remember them. them. What cultists? They they just uh, start to stack up after a while. Memories. What are you about? I remember. Uh, remember they all. Remember they all. Uh, they all took some kind of drug. Yeah, I do remember. Yeah. That. So Willie's got an apothecary contact called Stasia, and Ooh. maybe he could hit up Stasia to see if uh, anybody's. If uh, she's had any uh, orders or knows anybody who's taken any orders for some uh, exotic uh, hallucinogens in the last mm. couple of weeks. That's an intriguing thought. It is, isn't it? That's a good That's thought. That's a fucking fantastic idea. 
Well done. So Stasia is your, oh yeah, that's your uh, close contact. Okay. And an yeah. apothecary? Sure. Yes. I looked it up to see what it was. Okay. <laughs> no. Helena would like to meet your friend. All right. Yeah. So you describe what you saw. Do you remember mm -hmm. the weird behavior of them under it? Um, I remember they were like uh, raving were on about zombies. worms. And they were like um, digging just like aggressively and and violently. So oh. they were super hyped up. But yet they were still basically zombies, mm -hmm. as Seymour says. So I'm going to ask you for a, just to randomly see how much this, uh, your, your contact, we'll share info with you. Can I have a fortune roll with two dice, please? He's a skilled apothecary and in touch with the apothecary community. Twos. Fuck. That's not good. Well, so he, from your description, and he kind of asked you back and forth, were they like this? Were they all energetic? Blah, 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 blah. He says, okay, it sounds like what happens when you mix two different drugs, Black Lotus and Blood Needle. You've heard of both of those. Blood Needle uh, gives you this feverish, euphoric mania and rampant energy uh, and then runs out and you collapse in a heap. Black Lotus uh, induces a coma-like stupor and visions. So he's, uh, it'd be, it's kind of a very strange pair to do them both at once. I must say I haven't had anybody ever come in to ask me to combine that for them. Not something that's commonly done. Though, of course, someone could uh, find both of the separate ingredients on the street and, and mix them on their own, I suppose. It wouldn't be a particularly complicated thing to do. It would taste like hell, but I suppose if you're looking for that effect, you wouldn't care that much. I want to go to there. <laughs> Feverish mania, mania and coma-like stupor. All rolled into one. Two great tastes. Willie has some coin left, and he would like to leave some coin with Stasia. Ooh. to see if uh, he could ask around and if he gets any more information to get back to me. Oh, your money's no good here. Even better. Thank you for the I, Yeah, so he's like, you know, when you have these close contacts, you actually get some benefit from them. Though, if you want to supply him with coin, that will up the effect of his asking around. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't need to bribe him to do it, but if you fund him doing it, you might get a better effect. It's your call. I know coin is few and far between for you, sad I sacks. Two, I have two coins, so I'll give him. I'll give him one. I All will right. give him one, and I know that's that's not a coin. But okay. Um, a... and feel free to remind me periodically to, in case I lose track of it, to uh, update you on his investigations. All right, and at last, Seymour gathering some information. Thank you, Seymour. Uh, yeah, the uh. I don't know if you want to make this the gather information or this the actual uh, engagement, but I, I would like to either poke around and find out some more about the gang that might be targeting the divers, or I would like to just watch the divers get picked off some night and follow whoever does it. Um, that's more like their a hideout. job. So let's, okay. but the uh, try to find information about the gang. Uh, yeah, is I, wanna, certainly... I just, I, I just want to figure out who they are and fig make sure we're not going to run into some big bad patron of theirs. Oh come on! Like that would happen. <laughs> <laughs> or just see, you know, who we're gonna if, make sure we're yeah. not pissing off the uh, the you know gray cloaks that we have a tenuous alliance with or something that all makes sense so uh how do you want to gather just in, in broad strokes or specific contact how do you want to try to get yeah that i think i thing? think for that i would put on my uh fine cover identity as just a uh, kind of hoi polloi scallywag and uh <laughs> just poke around bars okay and, so your, uh, your, your identity name is hoi polloi and... scallywag did i get that right yep. <laughs> yep, that's right. <laughs> um, yeah, just just someone who fits in, in in the rougher parts of town that's not specifically Seymour. And just uh, uh, see if I can ask around and figure out, uh, yeah, maybe the name of this gang or whatever. Cool. What kind of role do you see that being? I would assume a consort. I'm okay. buying buying pictures of, of, what do they drink? Grog ale. Yeah, m fermented mushroom juice. Yeah. Okay. Know, I'm going to yeah, that... Google that and see if it's a thing. Consort definitely. See... Yeah, I think so it is two fives. They do it. They may. They do a lot with mushroom. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, two fives. That again gives you some info, but not the the full story. Well, uh, yeah. These uh, 
you, one of the contacts you're buying for, uh, it's like kind of fancies himself like an expert on the gangs of Duskwall. And uh, yeah, this uh, group, uh, you heard of the, the grinders? These fellas, they're usually in the docks. Uh, they've been poking around six towers lately, uh, mostly by the canals. Uh, stupid around there, you know. Uh, word has it they've done some protection type stuff, leaning on some locals. I don't know about the divers you're talking about. If you mention the divers, but I would I would not mention the divers by okay. name. I'd I'd say I hear somebody's been been ripping off some dudes that have been diving in the canals, just like real mm. real super casual like. Yeah, of course, I don't yeah, want to give any information myself. <laughs> okay, that's great. Uh, yeah. And you know them, uh, them gray cloaks. Well, of course, they're not going to try to put up with that. Uh, somebody else poking their nose into six towers. So, but can they protect their turf? I don't know. This guy would be a blogger, like a gang mm-hmm. blogger in another era. So, so we get that the we I, I might actually be doing the gray cloaks a good turn. Oh well. I imagine so. I, I'm, unless... I'm asking. I'm asking the DM. Is that is that oh, what he's oh, implying? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Definitely. Cool. 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 So yeah, maybe it'd be worth reaching out to our gray cloaks and seeing if mm-hmm. we can uh, kind of double dip on this one. Mm-hmm. Get them and to pay us for doing a favor too. And just general word on the street, like you guys have heard of a lot of the gangs, except the super secretist ones in Duskwall. You've heard of the grinders. You don't know much about them, but they are, in fact, a gang of toughs. They usually, they're based in the docks district, unsubtle, <laughs> smash and grab types of things, some protection racket types of things. Not usually heard of operating this far, this side of town, though. I mean, the docks are literally on the opposite side of town from here. Cool. Um, with that, and we can come back to it later if you want. With that, I might want to hit up our contact with the uh, uh, gray cloaks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just uh, uh, the gist of that would be they would not be happy if, in fact, grinders were operating here. And if you all were to dissuade them from operating here, why they'd be much obliged. And I will let them know that the pleasure uh, will be all ours. Excellent. Okay. Uh, so you can reconvene, and I think we're about ready to pick a job and do an engagement role here. I still think we should hit up the uh, pro and angle first. That's fine with me. Sure. I'm fine okay. with it. Okay. All right. So what is <laughs> uh, what is your goal here? What are you trying to do to solve the crime in a way <laughs> that is persuasive well, I- to uh, Lady Rowan? I, I think the the first thing we're doing is is we're letting Gun engage with the Cast bounty up. hunter and and figure out one way or another how that's going. Is it right? is it way too broad to say that our the job here is cover up the murder? <laughs> like, well, I think our specific job is, here is, is let you engage with the. Uh, Bounty hunter, if you're so so. Yeah. I don't think anybody suspects us of murdering him. No, but we should make sure it stays that way. Right. Yep. Exactly. So I'm going to try to scare off the bounty hunter at least. Okay. Yeah, I think that's what we're trying to, to do get right out now. Of this business. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if that. I don't know if that feels like a job though. Like, so how about, it feels more like just a conversation. Sure. Uh, okay. We could we could try that for free play for starters. Just uh, feeling out uh, the bounty hunter. Yeah. Are you cool with that? Is that cool with the team? Sure. I'm fine. Yeah. I was hoping to kill him, but fine. <laughs> well, so and and Willie, you said you were going to go too, right? I yeah. was. Co- yeah, but cover from um, afar. Yeah, but if it's just going to be a roll or something, um, yeah, we can just Come on, be my buddy. Yeah, of course. I'm gonna I'm gonna be there to to back up. But do I need to uh, do I need to do a loadout, or are we just doing a? Wow. Well, with you guys. <laughs> You, you know, you never really know how things are going to end up, do we? Yeah, I'm going to do a low down. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to keep myself light. I'm keeping myself a light load. Uh, and, as if to really communicate that I'm not here to do violence, but I certainly can. Well, right. I'm not going to I'm not going to be there. I'm hanging back just keeping you in in view, so I'm going with a with a normal load out. Okay. Sounds how good. are you reaching out to Casta? Yeah, so um I'm going to hunt her down. Essentially, I'm going to track okay. her like an animal. <laughs> Fuck it. This is a score. Let's have an engagement. Roll. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. 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 Yep. 
All right. So uh, base roll is 1D. Uh, do you have a major advantage? I feel like you're kind of at a same level uh, with this person. Mm-hmm. I'll give you a plus 1D for a district because you're in your home turf here. Okay. So I think uh, two dice for your engagement roll just to see what kind of position you can catch her in. Okay, yeah. I, yeah, if she somehow turns the tables, I think that would be... That'd be fun. I got a two and a six. Okay. So I get the six, right? Yep. <laughs> you are in a controlled oh, okay. position. So let's see, where would that be? Oh, that's too bad because I had a really good bad outcome for you. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so what does control sound like to you? And then I can pick a spot. I think honestly, if she, if I, if essentially I'm tailing her so well that she doesn't realize it and like I just show up in the middle of one of her meals like at a tavern or something, like a public place, like she's sitting down and I just sit down across from her. I think that's the exact perfect position I'd like to have. Okay, I love it. All I right. would like to be, Willie is in a in a corner across. Yeah. Across Nobody puts room. Willie in a corner. Except <laughs> Willie. <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, and you remember, we don't know exactly your background with Casta, but you know Casta is kind of flamboyant and has a taste for the finer things. And her <laughs> choice of restaurant is the Golden Plum Restaurant in Six Towers, home of the famous chef Roselle. You, uh, but there is uh, outdoor seating uh, at enough of a distance from a canal to not get the smell, uh, but to uh, overlook it and get some view such as it is. She, you can wait till you've got a six. You can wait till she's uh, ordered or is eating. Enter the meal, uh, whatever you like. You see on your way uh, up, you see two just sort of like unkempt looking, just past youth uh, carrying big bags of what appear to be equipment, but they're just like sitting around, looking around, uh, very out of place here. Okay, like probably associated with her in some way. It, see, it seems entirely plausible, like her bearers or something like that. Huh. Uh, so I sit down from across, across from Casta, like before the waiter arrives, and uh, like as the waiter is there to like take her order, uh, calmly just ask for a water, uh, <laughs> and uh, and uh, once the waiter leaves, I look across and say, "Well." I'm glad you're finally making enough money to afford a place like this. Ah, a gun, she says. What a what a pleasant surprise to see you again. You looks like you're doing quite well yourself, she says, looking at your scruffy gun-like clothing. But you see, you've caught her kind I mean, of off guard here. She didn't expect this. Yeah. Listen, Shall I order for no. you? Just water? You're wasting away, my dear. Yeah, I'm fine with just water. Thank you. Listen, I'm here to talk business. I won't take up too much of your time. I understand that you want to keep some distance between us, and that's fine. I also feel the same way. And that's why I'm here, just to let you know that we're sort of working cross-purposes here, vis-a-vis the Rowan girl. Now, a friend of mine got asked by someone very high up within that family to look into this, and we'd like to look into this unimpeded. Now, do you think that's something within your power? Mm, as long as you don't get in the way of my job, I have no reason to impede you. I am under contract, and you know that to me, a contract is as well, it's a contract. Unless a better contract were to come up. Now, here's the question who are you contracted with? Are you contracted with the family? Oh, you know, I can't disclose the name of my employers. Oh, come on. We've been through too much together. <laughs> Do you remember who pulled you out of night market that night? What are you, are you offering me something or threatening? Let's just get to the the point here. I'm offering you a chance to be safe. From? Just stay out of our way. All right. Uh, Okay. Um, You are trying to persuade somebody out of doing a job. I think uh, as opposed to role-playing it further, uh, Let's. This I, is think a this is kind of, I think this is kind of a rule, and it's a. Uh, it's not like a desperate position, but uh, it's going to take a lot to get her to quit a job on your say so. Yeah, this role is not going to go well, and that's okay. Okay, um, what are we? What are we rolling here? Well, it would have to be anything in resolve, right? Because uh, mm-hmm. that's the only thing that would make sense, and I don't have any pips anywhere in here. So, command is that applicable? Oh yeah, you you could be trying to command. Yeah, I think that um, 
in my head, Casta is a former subordinate of mine. Okay. So I think that I'm trying to wear the pips again. Okay, and, I like, love it. That is way, way past behind us now. Okay. Whew. The first one was a six. Okay. <laughs> oh. oh, okay, what's up? Uh, I I was gonna say you do have the option of spending stress to stress to push and get an extra die, and if you can find some kind of incentive like offering money or something else or threats or something that you think might increase the effect. So I already rolled it. So okay. I'm first with knowledge, essentially. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I think I'm gonna stick by that. I think that I I feel I don't feel like I. Mm. But this would be a stressful thing for her, I think, maybe. Like, mm-hmm. I think I want to spend the stress just for roleplay reasons, but I'll give you a new dice roll. I think that's going to be the fairest option for me. Oh, wait, you had a six and what else? I got a six and a five is the thing. Okay. But well, the five doesn't matter. But if you, so if you push that stress, you just get one more die to try to go for a second six. Well, I don't have any pips in resolve, though. So I would be, oh, but I can use my advantage, right? So no, you can check off two stress to get that extra die if you want. Okay. What did? Oh wait, 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 wait! You rolled command. Yeah. I see, and you yes. had zero pips. I got it. My yes. bad. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I think so you rolled a five. In effect. Okay. Exactly. Um, okay. Which is fine, but I feel like this is a stressful situation for her, so uh-huh. she's going to take the stress. Okay. I think the fair thing for me would be to then use that to just roll one dice. One die. I get you. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. I thought you rolled two dice because you had two dots. Check. Yeah, no, no, no worries. Okay. That's that's kind of my goal. That's why I'm I'm really just farming. Oh no. <laughs> okay, so I got a one. Okay. <laughs> and I give it to me. I earned mm. it. Huh. It's interesting to me. Why do you want me away from this job in particular? Hmm. Strangest thing. She kind of looks at you very thoughtfully for a minute. Well, anyway, we can talk about that some other time. I Killer will go now. along my way on my job, and, well, if you solve it first, Gun, well, be the best bounty hunter win. Don't call me. <laughs> Who wants to Wild Bill Hickok this woman so bad? <laughs> Kill her now. <laughs> In the middle of the restaurant. In the middle of the restaurant. Just godfather yep, just get, it. Just get it done. It. Gun just kind of, like, she kind of, like, uh, her, her head kind of falls forward so that her tri-corner hat is, like, covering her eyes. And uh, then she stands up and leaves. Um, she doesn't even um, she doesn't even indicate towards Willie. She just leaves. You're water, man. Uh, well. <laughs> okay. All right. That was interesting. Well, okay. is it still interesting? Do we want to dive into this exciting <laughs> Rowan job? I think I have a way to uh, to kind of uh, resolve this. Uh, interestingly, if that's the are one we, you want to do now, are we are we letting are we letting Casta walk? Yeah, that's up to you, Willie. You're here, right? <laughs> so this is like public place and yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's probably not a smart move. Okay, yeah, Willie Willie returns his pistols under his jacket and follows gone out at a uh, just a few minutes later. Listen, Willie, we're not pinning it on her, okay? I'm going to be firm about that with everyone else, but I wanted to give you the heads up. Okay. Have it your way. It's a bad idea. Okay. Who are we going to try to pin it on, team? <laughs> <laughs> Convening back uh, in the old parlor. So not only do we not get to pin it on her. I have an idea. You put her on our tail. Right. Well, are, are actually, uh, before Silver speaks up, are you gun letting them know that you put her on your tail, or are you going to keep that to yourself? Uh, ask me questions. Like, <laughs> how did it go? I, I, <laughs> I said what I had to say. Look, you're part of a team here. That doesn't cut it. All our asses are hanging out here. How did it go? Listen, she's going to stay on it. And she said, whoever gets there first is the one that gets there first. That's all, there's, that's all there is to it. So we need to come up with something. And I apologize. I created this situation. We we got there first like a week ago already. <laughs> yeah. True. All right, Silver. Why don't we pin it on Lord Skurlock? Nobody likes him. 
no. no everybody knows he's involved with evil doings and um maybe he's trying to clear out that cult i like for it his own nefarious purposes what like kind it. of proof could we get to rowan to buy it yeah that's a good point i will just throw in since it's been a while lady rowan specifically registered to disgust at being so close to lord skurlock's tower yeah Oh, yes, shit. and, and also she expressed sympathy when I told her that I well, that, uh, escaped uh, my the the, the uh, mm-hmm. wedding bargain. Yeah, uh, we're gonna we're gonna start a war among the Irish yes! aristocracy. That would go well. <laughs> yes, but nobody likes Lord Sherlock. <laughs> I mean, it'll go well for us. Yes, yeah, breeds opportunity. Yeah, wars among the aristocracy always work out well for the little guy. <laughs> and, I think, and I think it's also vague enough that. Um, you know, she she would buy it because I mean she's she's very eager to blame Lord Scurlock for just about anything. Well, it's insane, but it's wildly theatrical, so I'm on board. <laughs> yeah, I just if we can if we can come up with with a good way to sell it, I'm all for it. I'm just okay. trying to figure out the angle to sell it from. Yeah, it's um it's uh wild bunch uh, butch Cassidy. <laughs> um, yeah. It's out in a blaze of glory, freeze frame ending right here. All right. So we're going to do an engagement roll in just a minute. Here's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to have two separate clocks here with six segments. One is get enough info to pin it on Lord Skurlock or, you know, proof. The other clock is going to be what cast is up to. Who will get there first? I love this. (laughs) This I love this. So let's get to our engagement role. And remember, you'll have the possibility of flashing back. So there are always six options of your basic approach. Some don't always fit in all situations. Assault doesn't seem to make sense here. Just starting with violence. Maybe, I don't know. We'll just go kill Lord I guess I could be smashing into Lord Skurlock's place to look for evidence. Deception, lure, trick, or manipulate. Uh, stealth, occult, social might be a, the best fit here because it's kind of a, a persuasion effort ultimately. Or well, transport doesn't make much sense here either. You say social. I think so. And then what is your first step, I guess, at trying to find a slash concoct evidence, uh, pinning it on Lord Skurlock? And you had we heard don't have art. <laughs> What's that? I we don't have art. <laughs> I think my I think my reaching out to uh Stasia perhaps re- with regard to the drugs. Okay. May may lead us somewhere in that direction, maybe. I mean, it's something we've suspected all along anyway. I'm just putting it out there for the GM. Mm-hmm. Do we want to plant some evidence? Do we want to do we want to find a, a ripped up bloody dress and bury it in a shallow ga- grave on Skurlock's property and then but suddenly stumble up upon, upon it the, the next morning? What's that? Wouldn't they have picked up the dress with the body though? Just a dress. No one knows what she was wearing when she disappeared. Hmm. I mean, do do we just want to straight up fabricate the evidence rather than trying to make some sort of... Well, you do have one... I mean, before the whole Miss Shore Park fiasco, you had gotten clues that Skurlock was attached to this cult that, that she turned out to be part of. So that is some oh, sure. information you have. But I'm wondering if just faking it would be easier. <laughs> That's true. I mean, there could be a whole narrative about how she offended Lord Skurlock or deceived him in some way and he became angry. But I mean, that's all talk. But yeah, we don't have any actual physical evidence. Or could always get a invite back to tea and steal some. Uh, steal some from who? From uh, Lady Rowan, because didn't she live with her? Or did she not live she with her? She had done in the past, yeah. Yeah, that would have been... But, you know, that's. <laughs> well, maybe we can just find out where she lived and uh, break in there and steal some stuff. Steal some jewelry and plant it at yeah. Skurlocks or something and, like yeah, that. Kill a pig not, or something. No, it's not a terrible her. idea. Okay. I think we're heading toward an engagement role here. All right. <laughs> so you get your 1D for sure. Advantages. Is this plan particularly bold or daring? I think yes. this is balls out right now. I honestly. think it is. I think it is. <laughs> Plus D. Does it expose a vulnerability the target hit them where they're weakest? I don't think that really necessarily works. Oh, it's, his, yes, it it's his front yard. Yes, no, it, it does. It does hit. Oh. It, it does hit Lady Rowan. 
because I mean, she first of all, she hates Lord oh, Scurlock. Okay, it's her niece. Wow. Okay. Yeah, you're trying to exploit a weakness with with that familial connection. I love it. Right. Okay, that makes sense to me. The friends' contacts provide aid or insight. Um, I think some of your gather information work with the police report uh, and the drug thing you're working on. I think that'll wow. That's bringing up to four dice. Operations with the. However, We're target really is a higher game, tier. You guys. Lord Skurlock is a higher tier target, so that's going to take back one. So you're three dice for an engagement roll. It's pretty good. Who wants to make the roll? That's Jenny. Well, okay. Well, <laughs> watch She's me. Hot hand. Okay. What am I rolling? Four d six. A three d six. I no, took back three, one because three. Uh, yeah. Three d six. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You got a six. There we go. All right. Yep. Nice. All right. So your poking around, uh, getting information has paid off. I heard somebody mention finding where Danielle Rowan lives as one of the things or lived uh, before yeah. her untimely demise. Okay. Yeah. Timely. Of her timely demise. You ultimately do track that down. That's what your six is going to get you. It's in the uh, one of the towers called Shambles Tower, Crumble Tower, the Crumble Tower. In si- so one of the six towers of the Six Towers District called the Crumble Tower because it is in horrific shape and people just squat in there. You ultimately track down. There was a. You find out she was in a third floor room there. Or a little rich girl slumming, obviously. Exactly, yeah, uh, with her contacts. So we'll take you right there if you want. That's where your engagement role will take you. Sure. Okay, is everybody going? Uh, are there, Are you guys splitting up here? Or once you get this piece of information, are you all going to join in at this spot? Or somebody else can be somewhere else doing something else in a moment. I imagine uh, uh, Willie would probably definitely be. I don't think Silver would be uh, involved in breaking and entering in slums. No, so, I think um, you're. So. I think you're right. And also, I've got to kind of keep low profile because I'm the one who's going to have to report this to Lady Rowan. I'm definitely doing some B and E. Yeah. So Willie and Seymour, we go in there and we uh, check the place out. I assume it's well, poor little rich girl stuff. It's so it's all her. We go through her. Albert Camus books and her Velva Underground <laughs> records. Okay. And this was clearly a squat for multiple people. Like, and you're from the clothes, you're seeing some similar robes that were in the cult. And uh, it is just decrepit now, of course. It hasn't been lived in since the shooting. And it is just a piles of debris stacked up. It looks actually, it makes your place actually look fairly tidy and well kempt. <laughs> I can't imagine she doesn't have some sort of piece of jewelry or something hidden here somewhere. I want to, you know, look for loose floorboards, all that kind of stuff. Okay. That sounds like a fine die roll, my friend. Are what we talking of... uh, hunt? Hunter uh, study. No, it's not a study. Uh, study is, is a studying hunt? a situation. What's that? Is it a hunt? I could do a hunt or a study. I have a pip in both. I, I feel like study is probably because you're like assessing a situation, okay. trying to find something secret in it. Okay. Am I getting any assistance from my friend here? Uh, sure. What What do I need to do? Do I need so to? You can spend a stress to add a die roll to someone else. Like if we can find this evidence, it'll do some good for us. My stress is down to four. Sure. You can have okay. a stress. So 2d6? Yeah. Uh, yep. Okay. I know my stress is always down to some obscene number. Oh shit! Three and a one. Shit. A three. Okay. Um, can um, I spend a stress at this point, too, or after the rolls? Is it not okay? Uh, yeah. You. Uh, if you, I'll let you backtrack if you wanted to roll to spend two stress to get a third yeah. die. So you're not guaranteed a good roll out of it. No. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that because I think this is kind of a linchpin thing here. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Hold the clue. <laughs> I mean, if we can get a identifying piece of jewelry or something like that, that's huge. Oh, shit. shit. <laughs> okay. Uh, one. You. I'll take that three, I guess. <laughs> you guys no. spend time turning through the debris and just like it very gradually dawns on you. Someone has already been here. Uh, and probably well, that's something anything to know. worthwhile. Well and just uh, 
don't don't pay any attention to the sound of a tick mark happening over here or anything like that you get the you it, it took a while because it was in such it looked like it was such a shithole beforehand that yeah somebody has tossed the room already and probably gotten the sorts of things you were looking for as, as we are leaving can i can i uh uh rub elbows with any of the other uh residents around and see if i can ask about who's been in and out yeah um, and okay. I'm going to, since you did have the six engagement role, I will give you something good out of that. Cool. And they're like, yeah, there was three of them. There was, uh, we, they, they, we kept back from them. They were pretty heavily armed. There's this, uh, lady with this, uh, frilly shirt, uh, and all this gear. And then like two, two low life guys carrying all of her stuff. <laughs> okay. They made a beeline for this room and started going through it. Well, we kept out of the way. We're not going to go with that. We don't want any trouble. Just uh, it was last night it was. Uh, thank you much, and I I hand them um each a uh a cigarette or the cheap cigar or whatever. Ah, uh-huh. oh, you know what I like a, c- a cigarillo or something like that. I <laughs> okay. don't know. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's the what's the rest of the team up to? I assume you are working the case uh, in the meantime. Uh, and I'll I'll give you that uh, six position role uh coming into it though, because I don't want that to be a total waste. Do you have other other things you're hoping to get into? Uh, no, I'm just I'm just waiting to get the evidence uh, so that I can go and see Lady Rowan. So I'm just kind of gearing myself up for that. Okay, I'm gonna have to lie a lot, <laughs> <laughs> even more than you thought. It turns out, right? <laughs> so I'm just I'm just you know sorting through my my many many robes to see which one I'm gonna wear. <laughs> All right. Uh, Rip and Gun, uh, did you have anything going on in the meantime? I mean, maybe just, you know, sending that message to Circle of Flame saying, I have an artifact that oh, okay. perhaps you'd be interested in viewing. In, uh, in, in viewing. We might be able to exchange some information. Okay. Um, while you, okay, so you get back together and report the strikeout, but Willie, um, your contact, your apothecary contact uh, has gotten back to you from some info with some info. Uh, he threw that coin around pretty good. He found, you know, l- this apothecary, of course, he's completely legitimate, right? He's doing, mm-hmm. you know, medicinal purposes only. Uh, he did find someone who sold, not only sold those two drugs, but actually mixed them in carefully defined doses uh, to customers and might be able to give you more information about them. Okay. And where might we find this uh person oh you have many questions i'm just getting to my well, you brought him up vice purveyors i know i was flipping through the book while i was doing that flashback oh. to uh uh seymour slipping willie a couple cigars just in case you need to uh grease some elbows <laughs> <laughs> thank you but yeah um it's just somebody who uh, operates out of a shack about uh, across from the uh, house of the weeping lady in six towers uh, some people use some of his supplies apparently for uh, religious purposes, uh, and he's uh, sells to uh, cults and and things like that. Do we have a name? Marval. Marval. Okay, I think we should head over there and um, uh, rough Marval up. Okay. And Willie's um, not going to do this by himself, so I need uh, Gunnar Seymour along. Oh, Ooh, well. hear me. Yep, yep. Let's go. I'm all about this. I need to. Pr- I need to work off some aggression. <laughs> okay, uh, we advance you to Marval's place, and it is just uh, you know there are some nice buildings around here, uh, but there's just a walk down, uh, little steps into a damp like cellar converted into a room. But uh, inside, Marval has a little counter set up. It's almost like a proper shop and all sorts of uh, reagents and whatnot on a wall and steps up leading to what appears to be his lab. Ah, what can I do for you, gentlemen? Need some supplies, perhaps for your worship needs? And lady. He just sees uh, go and bend over and pick up this little little kid that's with her and plonk him down. On the on the counter in front of Marval, and then Marval sees that it, it's not a kid at all. It's like a guy who's probably late twenties, <laughs> early thirties, chomping on a cigar. And um, Willie says, um, 
I feel like the ventriloquist, the DC like Batman. We're villain. not doing a ventriloquist <laughs> dummy. <laughs> we, we haven't we haven't gone that bad yet. <laughs> it hasn't gone that far. Willie that says, is an idea uh, for a ruse later, though. A mutual friend of ours, uh, Stasia, says uh, you might be able to help me out with some information about a special medicinal order you received recently. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, Stasia uh, uh, gave me some uh, money, said you might come to visit. Uh, I, of course, uh, try to be as, uh, uh, well, uh, at least getting a little nervous now, uh, discreet. Uh, with my customers, of course, uh, I have a, a very uh, specialized uh, client base who uh, wants discretion, of course. What do you want to know, though? Black Lotus and Blood Needle? I sell both of these. You sell them mixed together? Uh, well, uh, here, here's the thing. Uh, I'll be blunt. You seem like, uh, well, a, a violent sort. But uh, the, the people I sold them to might as also be. And if I talk, well, if I start telling, saying who I sold them to and they come back and visit, well, what happens Here's then? Here's the thing, says Willie. And he takes out both of his pistols and sticks them in Marvile's face. I really thought you were going to pull out a grenade and just pull the pin. <laughs> no, that would be ridiculous. Oh, ooh, no, that'd be too mean. Oh, no. If he was to pull out the grenade and just put it in his mouth. But no. Uh, <laughs> Do it. Um, Okay, so that's what Drive we're Drive it like you sold it. Sold it. I do have the... Uh, okay, he is wearing the bandolier. Okay, so... Jesus Christ. He, pulled, he, he never goes anywhere without a bandolier. He pulls out a grenade, and um, he like just grabs Marval by his shirt, pulls him up to him, and just sticks the grenade in his mouth, you know, the pins dangling out the front. Yeah. And uh, he says, you know, these people well might hurt you. Or if you do tell us. But if you don't tell us, I'm definitely going to hurt you. He points at the grenade. He's like <laughs> nodding his head like, okay, 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 okay. Uh, I don't like I feel like in this situation, just stepping back, I feel like I don't even need to call for an intimidation die roll here necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> I just like it doesn't seem like absolutely necessary. I don't know. I was telling Brent earlier tonight, I've been watching Narcos. This is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. He. Um. Okay. Willie. Willie removes the uh, grenade. Secretly so, uh, thankful that he didn't have to use it because you know. Well, right. Because those are hard to replace. Grenade. Um. Yeah. Uh, yes, it was. And then he describes. Uh, there's a woman and a man. Uh. And he. And the man. Was, uh. He. Uh, very. Uh, so he basically describes the animated corpse and uh, Daniela Rowan to a T. They have wanted rather a lot of it. They had very specific, uh, very specific specifications that they wanted me to fill. And I did, of course. I was doing a good job. And uh, they bought it and did not return afterward. It was about, oh, what was it, about a week ago? Mm hmm. I hope that tells you all you need to know. And uh, Willie nods at Gunn to pick him up and put him back down on the floor. Uh, I hope that uh, that uh, meets all of your needs. Uh, feel free to come back and shop sometime. You don't have an address for these people by any chance? Uh, no, of course not. They came and no. uh, went from here. So they weren't, they weren't typical customers of yours? This was a one-time this, uh, The only time they came, yes, but very memorable pair. Uh, <laughs> As, yeah, I'm sure you'll agree. Uh, uh-huh. Gone looks over at Willie. Doesn't really get us anywhere, does it? Do I buy it? Do I, do I, uh, is there any kind of, like, figure out if he's lying check that I can make? That would be kind of a study sort of thing there, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would stuck be a study, right? I stuck a live grenade in his mouth. He would have to have yeah. some. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just want to cover my bases. I, I just think, I, you know, if we walk away with not a whole lot, then that's mm -hmm. okay. But if we walk away with a little bit more, I'm, I'm plumbing here. Um, so I'm making a study roll. Okay. And since I have no pips in there, <laughs> all right. Um, I don't know how to interpret this, but I got a three and a one, <laughs> okay. and so it's a one. That's a one. Uh, yeah, yeah, you you have no idea, uh, and you're not yeah. sure what would motivate him one way or the other. You're completely clueless as to <laughs> as to read this guy. Yeah, seems uh, fine to me. <laughs> All right, I'm satisfied. Yeah, I'm not satisfied. I mean, I was hoping. I mean, it's it's obvious. You know, it should have that this would be the end result we got, but I was hoping maybe somebody else had provided these drugs to them. But, shit. 
Okay. Well, it was worth trying. Uh, is is that all you need from me then? I can. You won't be visiting me again. Just see that we don't. We may visit you again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Gotta get out of this line of work. Have a nice day. Uh, you as well. Meanwhile, cutscene: Casta and her associates looking down on Mist Shore Park with a uh, small band of blue coats, and says. Uh, Yes, Lady Rowan is most appreciative of your help, gentlemen. You are very good at your jobs. Let us fan out. I believe the mystery lie can be solved somewhere within here. And she pulls out a small mirror and looks at herself and then kind of waves it around in the park. Yeah. All right. Uh, Cast has got a lead on you guys here, it seems. Do you want to reconvene and try to figure out what kind of evidence you would need to fabricate? Yeah, we got a mm-hmm. fuck. Don't have time for that. We need to kill her. I should have shot her in the restaurant. We need to kill her. If that's our final option, it's got to be me. Why are you so opposed to us killing her? We got history, that's all. Everybody's got history. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll listen to other ideas, but I don't see anything else. I could always turn myself in. Well, no, that's not an option. Because you're going to come back to us, and, and that's just going to... Hmm. Silver, what's the final product you're hoping to take to Lady Rowan? I was hoping to take some kind of artifact or um, you know, something that uh, something that would link uh, Lord Scurlock. What about the heart? That's what I was thinking, um, but I mean, I don't want to take it. I don't want to take away Rip's storyline where he's going to show it to the. We're not. We're not trading off this heart. <laughs> Until we get yeah, I, I think it's probably not a good idea to trade off the heart because, you know, then there's going to be all sorts of questions about where we found it. Yeah, I mean, that's that was kind of what I was thinking. But um, I mean, if you if you want to risk it on, you know, her accepting my word, which is a really bad idea because we've got the bounty hunter as well. <laughs> I don't know. I'm spitballing here. Help me out. I've got it. Um, let's solve two problems. The breakers, the was divers, that the... grinders, grinders. The grinders. Thank you. What if we pin it on the grinders? Ooh, ooh, oh, yeah. Oh yeah, I'd forgotten about them. Yeah, absolutely. How? That's all right. How do we do that? Well, uh, how about we kill them all? <laughs> and, <laughs> we, and we plant. The, and then kill and Lady plant, Rowan. And we plant the heart at the scene. No, we're not getting enough the heart, though. We can, can we we, figure wait out a way. Minute, can how, we, about, can we, how about we kill we them all? But Seymour knows how to make stuff look like other stuff, like the book uh, that we that we were trying to read when we went to that party. I can't. We can force like, Seymour could try to make a fake heart. Well, no. a fake a fake mummified haunted heart? Yeah. It's not going to pass muster. I don't think that's going to pass muster. Oh, what if we can bring Casta into contact with the grinders and then kill them all? <laughs> and um, because Casta's got Casta's got Rowan's stuff. He's got Dan she, or she's got Daniela Rowan's stuff. We need to get Daniela Rowan's stuff into proximity of these grinders. What if I reach out to the bounty hunter? And explain that uh, we have an angle on the grinders. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, I've got a and, simpler and idea. The conflict, the conflict is that that we just didn't want her poaching the grinders off us. But since she's obviously already figured out it's the grinders, oh well, I'm just here to make peace. <laughs> I've got a good idea. Willie's got do. an idea. What if we get some of Daniela Rowan stuff? Somehow we get some kind of evidence thing, okay, or maybe even the heart. We uh, give it to the divers, or we put it in the canal. We have the divers go get it. We let the grinder shake them down and take it from them, and then we pin it on the grind. I'm not gonna. I I, I disagree with doing it with the heart, but not a bad idea. When it, when I say it. It's a pretty bad idea. It seems overly convoluted. <laughs> well, and, and won't the grinders just give up the divers and then... 
No, because they won't have a fucking clue what it is. They'll just want it. Well, sure, they'll, they'll want, just it, want but, it as part of but their then, shit. But though. then when Rowan grabs them and interrogates them. Oh, no, we kill them. <laughs> we, we, this always ends with us killing them all. <laughs> I, I <noticed laughs> Every one of my scenarios. Well, then why don't we just with... go in there and kill them and then plant the evidence? Yeah, we could do that. <laughs> the other one, was, my way, was more Scooby Dooey. All right. <laughs> Are we agreed with this plan? Pin it on the grinders, uh, kill the grinders, uh, plant evidence on the grinders, uh, and take it from there next next session. Yeah, we just have to we just have to get that evidence, which means getting it from from Casta at this point. We either get it from Casta or or Silver goes to T again and sees if there's Ooh. some kind of uh, Daniela artifact that she can get her hands on without anyone noticing. Your call, Silver. Otherwise, it's the heart. I think the heart is too... I mean, people don't know that it's Skurlock's heart. That's true. Or that the heart was wanted by Skurlock. I don't think the heart connects it to anything. No, and we're going to want that to, We're going to want that yeah. thing to, to lure him out of hiding anyway. Well, fine. You guys are going to have to help me come up with some kind of story as to why I want to look at Daniela's stuff. Oh well, you don't have to. I'm saying we could still go after after Ooh. Costa and get it from get it from her. I've got an angle on that. It, so sorry, it, it, I feel like we walked into this session saying, "Yeah, and we'll have a job by the end of it," and instead we're like, <laughs> "Uh, well, <laughs> this is we we got ourselves in a lot of spaghetti this, uh, last week, folks." <laughs> That's true. I'm loving it though. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we'll leave it at that cliffhanger. You've struck out so far on pinning the job on on Skurlock. Uh, you may switch uh, gears to the grinders next and try to kill two birds with one stone. Kill many, many birds with one stone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we do better with assault. So let's just... <laughs> <laughs> We're 